this is Red Bank coming to you live from Vulcan Gas Company here in Austin, Texas for a brand new episode of Kill Tony. Give it up for Tony Hitchcliffe! Are you ready for the best goddamn motherfucking night of your lives, huh? Make some noise for Red Band, everybody. Hey, Look at everybody. Him. He started podcasts. You're at Kill Tony, the number one live podcast in the world. Brought to you by the Red Rose, the Yellow Rose, Deep Eddie Vodka, Austin Security Guard Service, Gel Blaster, and Screwball Peanut Butter Whiskey. How about a hand for the band, everybody, huh? Are we doing this shit tonight or what? That's James Atkins on the drums. John D's on the keys. Matt Muling on the electric guitar. Paul Deemer on the horns. And that's motherfucking D-Madness on the bass guitar right there. Live, in the flesh, this shit is going down. Before we start tonight's show, here's a little bit more from the amazing sponsors that made tonight's episode available for you here right now. Hey y'all, special announcement, and we wanted you guys to hear it first so that you have a chance to buy tickets, but tickets for the next six months of Kill Tony shows go on sale this Tuesday at noon at ComedyMothership.com. So Tuesday, noon, Central Standard Time, you actually have a chance to get your shot at tickets. They are going to go extremely fast, but we wanted to give you guys a chance, so get on it. Tuesday, noon, six months of Kill Tony at the comedy mothership good luck hey y'all out here in austin texas business is a booming and all around the country several industries are heading for a hiring boom this spring including e-commerce healthcare and surprisingly hospitality it's one of the areas with the most growth not only does this industry need to hire for service positions but also managerial positions and back office operations positions if you need to hire qualified candidates as soon as possible for any of these industries or any other industry you need ZipRecruiter and right now you could try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash Kill Tony Red Band ZipRecruiter uses its powerful matching technology to find the qualified candidates for a wide range of roles. See a candidate who would be perfect for your job? ZipRecruiter makes it easy to send them a personal invite so they're more likely to apply. ZipRecruiter also offers attention-grabbing labels that speak to job flexibility like urgent, training provided, remote, and more. No doubt about it. Let ZipRecruiter keep your team growing strong. No matter what the industry, four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter, get a quality candidate within the first day. See for yourself. Go to this exclusive web address to try ZipRecruiter for free. ZipRecruiter.com slash KillTony. Again, that's ZipRecruiter.com slash K-I-L-L-T-O-N-Y. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Hey, y'all. Today's episode is brought to you by sheathunderwear.com. And I love this sponsor. Look, let me be honest here. We say that about all the ads that we read. We say that we love it. We say this and that. These things, these sheath underwear have literally been connected to my butt, Red Band's butt, our genitals, everybody who we work with closely's genitals and butts, every single episode that you've ever listened to. Once Sheath Underwear came into our lives, we literally threw away all our fancy brands and all these popular things and this and that because there is no doubt they are literally the most comfortable materials you could possibly have next to your precious, precious precious genitalia. Red Band? Yeah, they're high quality. They can be worn as boxers or briefs. They have that moisture wicking, you know, for my big thighs, and it keeps everything cool and separated. Fly a lot? Hate nuts stuck to your legs? I do. Well, they're great for working out also, and it's comfortable. So for 2023, step up your underwear game. Graduate from holes, loose fabrics, cheap cotton, or overpriced designer brands, and buy the greatest underwear that has ever graced the balls of men. Sheath underwear, the underwear of legends. That is correct. Sheath can be worn as regular boxer briefs or you can use the incredibly high-tech sheath pouch to keep everything separated. I believe it was Offspring in the 1990s that said, you gotta keep them separated. Personally, I don't keep them separated. There's just an extra pouch in front of my uh, Italian stallion that just acts as an extra guard, an extra layer of comfort. I swear to you, you have not 
seen me or heard me not wear these underwear for years. I wear them every day, and I swear to you, they are the most comfortable pair of briefs I've ever worn. So go to sheathunderwear.com and use the promo code TONY. You're going to get 20% off your next order. Once more, sheathunderwear.com, promo code TONY for 20% off. Let me be next to your stuff. Are you guys ready to start tonight's fucking show or what? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, some weeks are just straight up fucking better than others, everybody. This show is magical. It started at the Comedy Store almost 10 years ago. We were doing this, but when nobody knew what a fucking podcast was, when no one was doing anything in front of an audience, and we made it about comedy. Comedians watching comedians do comedy, which makes tonight that much more exciting. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you as our guest tonight, one of the greatest comedians of all time, Texas' own Roseanne Barr. Oh my God! Yes. 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 Woo! We did it! The Queen! Oh my God! Ladies and gentlemen, this shit is about to fucking go down. Roseanne, Red Band, and us. And cigs! She's got cigarettes, ladies and gentlemen. We're having fun here tonight. We are going to watch fucking comedy. Roseanne, I've wanted you on this show for almost 10 years. How you doing? Good to be here. Oh, it's so fun. I can't believe how fun it is. (laughs) 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 Really? I swear, it's so fun. Everyone is, like, we were up in the uh, green room, you know, and, um, uh, um, like, everyone, uh, I'm out of breath. Six steps is hard for an old woman. But, uh, well, everyone who came through that door, well, they were weirder looking than the one before them. (laughs) And I was just so happy to see weird looking folk, you know, because like when you live in California, you see a lot of Stepford like people everywhere, you know, you never see any real people. You know what I mean? Bunch of fakes and phonies out there in LA. Here in well, Texas, you see a everything's lot of people real. That they can't make any emotion on their face because of the <laughs> Botox and whatnot, you know, that kind of thing. But. It's so great to see people with lines on their face. I I am so happy to see it. Thank you. Hell (laughs) yes. Roseanne, luckily I have a bucket filled with fucking weird looking people. With lines on their faces. And we're going to create more lines on their faces here tonight. You guys know how it works. If I pull a name out of the bucket, they get 60 seconds uninterrupted. You know their time is up and you hear the sound of a kitten. That means they have to wrap it up then or else they bring out the angry West Hollywood bear, which is very loud and it scares them and it stops them from talking, Roseanne. It is unbelievable. Uh, And then after that, I interview them. We find out more about them. They get fucking feedback from the great Roseanne. Oh, boy. Well, you know, I just have to say this like I told you. You know, I know like I'm, you know, I I don't punch down. That's one thing I think comedy that punch down sucks ass. So, and I am not going to do it. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Okay, so, and I'm really famous and um, rich and um, (laughs) talented and gorgeous. So, I am not going to go criticize somebody who's just starting out. So, I think the better thing for me is to be the motherly voice of encouragement and and honesty. Like, you know, like a mom to the person. You know, see what I'm saying? (laughs) What? So that, that's how I've chosen. Because you know why, people? I swear to God, I think there is a war between good and evil. I do. I, does anyone agree with me? So I try to stay on the good side. I love it. I love it. We'll, we'll play a little good cop, bad cop here okay. tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, let's get this show started with one of our regulars. Instead of going to this bucket and meeting somebody, let's, let's watch a new minute from a guy whose life we changed almost two years ago. You watch this guy go from living in his van, being broke as hell, now he's selling out all around the fucking world. 
doing arenas, wearing Rolexes, new outfits from Amazon every week. Ladies and gentlemen, sing along if you know it. This is Hans Kim. This is Hans Kim. This is Hans Kim. Hey. What's up? It's good to be here in Texas with all the survivors of the winter storm. A lot of weak limbs fell off this winter. Moved back to California. You gotta be tough to survive in Texas. If the ice doesn't get you, ice will. I don't need electricity, all I needed was my freedom to bear arms. If I get cold, I'll just shoot my nine millimeters five times in the air, warm myself around the barrel. But yeah, doing good. Um, <laughs> I recently saw a group of blind people walking around. I was like, what's the point of that? <laughs> One electric bus and your whole community is gone. <laughs> Thank you. Hell yeah, Hans Kim. I loved it. I loved the first 50 seconds of that. What, what was that at the end there? You saw a group of black people? What did you say? Bl <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was looking back at D, John, and fucking James Atkins, and we all had the same look of confusion on our face. Can you help us uh, to understand what that last joke was? I said a group of blind people. A group oh. of blind people. How many of you, by round of applause, heard blind people? Okay. How many of you, by round of applause, heard black people? Yeah, yeah it's like a, it's a weird sound thing in this room. <laughs> I'm sorry. The black people thought you said black people, by the way, which counts for a lot. That's, that's all that really matters. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What the fuck? D. Madden has got double roasted on that somehow. He's like a, like a motherfucking twice-baked potato back here. No matter which way you heard it. Hans is like all these black blind people with dreadlocks and bass guitars walking around. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> I love it. So welcome back, Hans. That's another good minute from you. Rock solid. How's life going? It's amazing, Tony. Uh, thank you again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I have been doing great. I've been headlining in Philadelphia, Buffalo. Been having sex. Whoa. <laughs> Let's talk about the shows. We talk about the sex enough. T explain to people what it's like going from uh, literally trying to do the open mic at these clubs around the country to absolutely having your own night and filling it up. It's like uh, before I was like, come on, everyone listen to me. And now everyone's listening to me. I'm like, oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, black people are walking around. <laughs> yeah. yeah, blind people are wild. Um, <laughs> I love it. Anything crazy happen in Philly or Boston or anything? Um, well, you know, I was on stage and a 52-year-old nurse decided to jump on stage and kiss me. Whoa. Um, wow. So that's a thing that happens. Uh, but yeah, that, other than that, it went pretty good. Um, got a couple clips, put it on my TikTok. Okay. Roseanne Barr, this is your first time seeing Hans Kim, I do believe. What are your thoughts? Is it the first time I've seen you? No, it's no, not. No, it isn't. Oh, that's right. You brought her up here. <laughs> yeah, I, I was the one that introduced Roseanne. It was an honor. Uh, it was an amazing feeling uh, to introduce someone and get applause for, <laughs> for saying their name. Uh, yeah, it's good to see you, Roseanne. So good to see you. <laughs> Uh, you're so funny. Thank you. Um, you're so funny. Your stuff is so well written too. God, it's so great to see a good, uh, you know, a comic who writes good material. Congratulations. And, Thank you, uh, Roseanne. Boom. Keep going. keep going. What a way to get the show started. Another new minute by Hans Kim. Let's keep it moving. There goes Hans Kim, Thank everybody. You. We're in it. Quick little interview for Hans. We see him every week. It's time to go to this bucket and get some fresh blood out of here. This is where shit gets wild. 
We had a puppet on two weeks ago. I mean, you can't even make this shit up. It's crazy. Anything can happen. Your first comedian out of the bucket tonight goes by the name of Rama. Rama, everybody. Make some noise for Rama. This is Rama. This is Rama. This is Rama. This is Rama. Here we go. The Kill Tony debut of Rama, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. Good night, everybody. All right, just got here to Austin. These dating apps out here are pretty crazy. Uh, funny enough, they have a lot in common with my new diet. Basically, <sighs> I'm just trying to avoid trans fats. <laughs> All right. So because you guys asked, uh, let me tell you about myself. Everything I own is black. My room is painted all black. All my clothes are black. I got two black cats. And, uh, you know, sometimes it makes things difficult. You know, you try to wipe the cum off. You pick up a shirt or a towel, and then you're just like... And then you hear... I thought it was closer to a minute. That was, you know, they're going to have the sound effect. I was trying to do a meta joke right there. Oh, Rama, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. I thank you. love it. What an interesting name, Rama. Am I saying that correctly? Rama, yeah, yeah. Rama, what is that? Uh, I guess it's from the Old Testament. It means the word of God. Oh, wow. Pretty serious. I, you would think the word of God would have more punchlines in a 60-second so. set. You would think I guess, so. I guess God isn't quite as funny as we all hoped for. Rama. He's trying his best. How long you been doing stand-up? Uh, I started kind of during COVID. Okay. Yeah, things got weird. I could tell by your timing. You're used to <laughs> empty rooms of sick people, so... <laughs> Very good. I can tell the COVID starters when they get in here. Definitely. I love it. So, Rama, let's talk about it. Where'd you start stand-up comedy at? Uh, I started in Denver. I was there for a little bit. Um, did it a lot in Ohio, Dayton, that kind of area, but everybody's kind of weird around there, so... Roseanne also started stand-up comedy in Denver. Damn. The only difference is she has talent. <laughs> 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 So Rama, let's doors, talk about it. Am I right, Roseanne? Very good. Wooden Shut doors. the fuck up. What do you do for a living, Rama? Uh, I am a DJ. Ooh. Music wow. producer. Oh, my goodness. Right when you couldn't be any more unlikable. There we find out <laughs> that you're a DJ. What's your wacky DJ name? Because I don't think Rama's going to cut it. That's what, I, that's what I've been going by. You go by Rama? Mm hmm. Not. Okay. Not, not, not DJ Rama? No. That's kind of whack. I wouldn't. Just do that. Rama? Yeah, yeah. I'm guessing all bar mitzvahs or. <laughs> Rama? <laughs> Who hires a Rama for their... Uh, not many people, honestly. Okay. It's kind of weird. How do you make a living doing it if not a lot of people do that? Uh, I also sue a lot of people. So Okie dokie. Uh, that, that's, we have to... And, and we'll be right back after these messages. Uh, what do you sue people for? Uh, I can't disclose that. Okay. I, w I mean, I would if I could. I signed agreements and all that stuff. Okay. You, you sue a lot of different people for different things? Just... At airlines, most I mean. Oh, okay. Oh. All right, but you can't talk about it. Can't talk about it. It's still the case is still pending. Oh, it's closed. Case oh, closed. Shit. It's a closed case. But you had signed an NDA. You can't talk about it. Correct. Yeah. You, they settled for seven hundred thousand uh, dollars. About six hundred and ninety-four thousand less than that. Yeah, it's a gift. It's a fucking gift. We don't play prices right rules either. I was off by six thousand fucking dollars. I love it. So what happened? What'd they do? Come on, you could talk about it. It's just the whole internet. Talk about it. Um uh base oh man, I'm gonna get in trouble. You're okay. Well just, I, uh, just don't fucking sue us afterwards. They broke my DJ gear, right? And well they lost it and then broke it, and then I was like the, no airlines cover anything with their policies. Right. They're, basically like fuck you uh -huh. unless you're disabled so i wore an eye patch oh my god <laughs> yeah that's a horrible idea for you to talk about this right now <laughs> thank you red man I, I did it for the laughs okay d madness is fucking pissed right now all right 
Sorry. You got a fake eye patch on, this fucking guy. Sorry. I had a contact, too, that made it all blurry and stuff like that. <laughs> Just underneath, in case... <laughs> Roseanne laughed, that's fun. <laughs> Roseanne's finally laughing it's at you. It's so fucking hilarious, I love it. Thank you, Roseanne. This friend of mine sued... Uh, she she made a living suing, uh, you know, corporations too, because you really can do it. Everyone should look into it. <laughs> and uh, she uh, she was a trans, you know. And so, well, they said they didn't. She was a masseuse also, but yeah. except for she had a penis and all. So they'd ask if they yeah. had a penis and stuff. So then she sued. See, what the fuck is going on, dude? It's a fucking live podcast going on. Go, 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 go. Who the fuck has to pee eight minutes into the show, by the way? So, what the fuck? I didn't know that was a side effect of blindness. So what is going on So then she sued because they said they didn't want a uh, woman with a penis to mas- do their massage. So that's discrimination, right? Yeah. So she sued and she won like, you know, a, a six upward of you know, big time six figures. So I think it's great when people sue big corporations for whatever they can get, because they're choking us fucking dry and they're trying to kill us with their fucking shots and whatever else they're trying to cram down yeah. on our Sue those fuckers! Sue them fuckers till they're broke! Oh my goodness. Tony, can I say something? No. Okay. What do you want to say? Uh... Funny enough, I found out about the show about a week ago, honestly. Okay. I probably watched maybe This is four. great. I'm glad I gave you the chance to say something. I That's probably great. I watched... Hold on, hold on. I found out about you three and a half minutes ago. Who gives a fuck? What are we talking about, Ramas? I've watched maybe 40 episodes or so since then. Okay. I think it's the best thing that's ever Thank happened to Thank you so much, up. Rama. Honestly, Thank you. you. Thank you. Here's a, here's a little joke book. There you go. See, he's funny. He just has shit material. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Rosie. I'm saying, you are real funny. You just have shit material. Go, go back to the drawing board. Boom. And like that, the show continues with the great Roseanne Barr, motherfuckers. Your next comedian out of the bucket goes by the name of Caitlin Kosis. Caitlin Kosis. La da. Hey, 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 hey. Who's having fun tonight, huh? Here she is, everybody. Caitlin Kosis. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm trying to get off of Instagram right now. That's my goal for 2023. It's an app that gives me really low self-esteem because I compare myself to Instagram models, and I'm just like, oh, I don't have what men want. I'm not small and cute and underage. Like, (laughs) I'm never going to be good enough for Chris D'Elia. You know what I mean? It's... (laughs) not in the cards um i feel like guys who do try and pick up women on instagram are the kind of guys that would just agree with everything they post like one time i posted a story of me watching america's next top model and this guy replied and he was like i love that show and i was like really you love america's next top model name three eating disorders (laughs) let's hear it all right, cool. There Thanks. you go, Caitlin Kosis. This is your first time on this show, correct? Yes. How's it going? How long you been doing stand-up? I started about a year and a half ago. Where at? New Jersey. New Jersey. Do you live here now? No, I'm visiting right now for the week. I have a friend who lives in Austin. Okay. But I might come back for the summer. Right. I mainly perform. Have you enjoyed Austin since being here? Today's my first day. Ooh, wow, yeah. what a start. Yeah, it's, it's been good. I got in at like 11 this morning. My flight was at 5 a.m. Haven't slept. I'm doing good. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Sponsored by Adderall, everybody. Yeah. Here we are. <laughs> Caitlin, what do you do for a living? Right now, I have two part-time jobs. I work at a daycare, mm-hmm. and I also work at a wedding studio, and I do like, like administrative office stuff. Okay. Yeah. Well, what do you love about New Jersey? <sighs> What do I love about New Jersey? I mean, it's a great commuter state. New Jersey's a great state to go to other states from. You can leave real easy. Wow. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) 
<laughs> um, I like the beach and the mountains. I don't know. Are you sure you live in New Jersey? What the fuck are you talking about? What do you love? No, I love stepping on syringes in my bare feet. Uh, nothing better than the old Jersey beach. Freezing cold everything. Yeah. Algae. Yeah, death. I mean, there's not much. Right. There's not much to love. I but love it. Okay. So yeah. what else about you? What do you do for fun? What's something exciting about the life of Caitlin Kosis? I do comedy, clearly. I like to hang out with my friends. I like to play piano. Ah. And got How long have you been playing piano for? On and off since I was like 12. Interesting. Yeah. Roseanne but grabbed her microphone. Well, I want to ask her something. What do you like about comedy? Oh, I don't know. I'm still trying to figure that out. I mean, I like writing and I like being on stage and performing. And it's really good for me, too, to face some... I had some stage fright when I first started, and it's really helped with that, too, just putting yourself out there. How would the stage fright affect you, exactly? I would just get really nervous before shows. I would get really jittery, and I would, like, stumble on my words and mm -hmm. get I all did in that, too. Head. Yeah. Yeah. How do, you, how do you fight against that? How do you, w you win? Just, the more you do it, the easier it gets, and... Mm -hmm remembering that it's just part of the process. You know, you can't get better if you don't try. I wished it, that you would tell us more about you. Okay. You know, that's what I, I felt, that you are funny and you have a lot to say, but I think an important thing about comedy is we want to know who we're hearing it from. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I want to hear that from you. And I think it will help you to go on there and then, you know, drop a little here, mm -hmm. a little bit more personal, and then drop another bombshell here. Because I know you have some bombshells you want to drop, and you're capable of writing, and I hear it. You're a great writer. Thank you. Do you have, yeah. let's, let, let me ask this, a year but and a I half. I just want to say some, some more um, of us getting to know who you are, well, that will help us to get it. Totally. Okay. No doubt. A hundred percent. That's great advice. Let me ask you this. You're a year and a half in. Do you have a joke that is more about you that you just didn't do in this exact minute during your set here tonight? Well, there you go. It appears <laughs> as if though Roseanne is correct. The pharmacist has prescribed something that you need. Like, what about your parents? I bet they were weird. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I could tell you had weird parents. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot I could say about that. I mean, that's something that I'm still working on exposing and, like, writing about is more personal Going to therapy stuff. a lot for it, are you? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. The, the funnier you can make it, the faster you'll heal from it, I'll tell you that much. Yeah. Right. I, I can see you got a lot of that shit in there, girl. Let it out. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Look at that. Literally the greatest female stand-up comedian of all time giving advice to a year and a half in female stand-up comedian. How fucking cool. Do you have an innie or an outie belly button? Red band, you cannot ask you cannot ask girls pulled out of a bucket a question like that. Actually, how long uh, of a uh, stand-up have you done, like a set? Oh my before? goodness gracious. Red band, you're not fucking booking her on Thursday's show, you fucking idiot. <laughs> Jesus Christ. The longest I've done is 20 minutes, though. Just, just putting go. that out there. There you go. What are you going to do? That's good. How, how'd it go? <laughs> <laughs> it went good. Unbelievable. <laughs> you are a disgusting pig. Do you know that? Red Band books a show every That's Thursday. one of those things you got to deal with, though, you know. So you just got to... <laughs> That's one of the fucking things you got to deal with, and it never ends. It never fucking ends either. Yeah. Hey, Roseanne, what are you doing Thursday? Uh, <laughs> what? What did you say? He asked what you're doing Thursday, if you want to do a spot on this show. <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> you know, the only thing that's been on me, I found to my dismay when I went to the doctor, is my vaginal walls. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. So I'm out of the game, you know, out of the game. What did they, wait, what did they say? What's wrong with you? Well, they want me to go on the hormones like all the other old bags of my age that are on the hormones so they can, you know, have sex with a guy they've been with for 40 fucking years and can't stand anyway. <laughs> to plump up the fucking vaginal walls there for that disappointment. <laughs> 
you know, and then grow a fucking beard and all the other shit, you know, pubes down to your fucking knees. No thanks. No thanks. I'll just stick to my ID channel murder shows. God damn right. You see what I'm saying? God damn right. I watch those all the time, and my vaginal walls are strong as hell right now. Well, I've had five children, five ungrateful little fucking bastards come through there, and so you see that takes a toll. Damn right. Roseanne, you are amazing. Caitlin Kosas, thank you for uh, signing up for the show. Fresh thank off, you. fresh off your thank flight. You so here's a little joke book. Caitlin, 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 Caitlin. Here's a joke book. Uh, people from Jersey can't. Hey, catch can them. I get a cocktail up in this motherfucker? You want to? Hell yeah. We got someone working on that. We got a red wine, right? Cabernet on the way. Let's do a little special treat right now, ladies and gentlemen. I know we have a lot of regulars. We have a lot of special guests. Tonight is a, is a big one for that. I want to see another minute from this guy. Uh, he came on the scene. He's only been doing stand-up for six months, but he's a fucking little sensation. He's absolutely hysterical. This is Austin's own Uncle Laser, everybody. Oh, shit. Here he comes. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the real deal. Uncle Laser. Listen here, I'm all about everybody being confident in their self, but you need to be fucking honest with yourself too. I've been hooking up with some plus size women as of late and I keep hearing this goddamn term slim thick. Rihanna at the Super Bowl was slim thick. No, she was fucking pregnant. Okay, you know what I'm saying? I hooked up with this girl the other night. She was out of breath after we were taking a shower together. She kept saying she was slim thick. I said, Dollar, you need slim fast. You're built like a hefty trash bag. What some would call an ice cream truck. All right, listen here. I get it. Round is a shape, okay? But you won't be around much longer in that fucking shape, darling. But I do like those big girls because I got them tight pussies. I keep a little flower in my back pocket to find a wet spot every now and again. Oh, my goodness. Nothing but swagger, ladies and gentlemen, at 1,000 miles an hour. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. That is, we just got to watch COVID get transmitted to the great Roseanne bar. Or chlamydia if you're not careful. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uncle Laser is wild. He will put your vaginal walls to the test, Roseanne, I promise. My goodness gracious. The kid is the real deal. Only, yeah. what, six, seven months in the fucking game. I'm just going to keep saying four. No, it's been like since July, whatever. I don't do math. Okay. I do math. Did you go to school? Did you go to normal school? We know you're from the middle of Texas, the fields, the oil fields. No, I was I was homeschooled growing up. Oh my goodness! That and I is got uh, I got ex I got expelled from uh, having sex with my teacher. I love you, mom. But no, oh relax. My goodness. You are relax. Out, you are out of control. Relax. You are. Out I, of I, I I did call my mom earlier, and I was like, "Yo, I'm sitting in the green room with Roseanne," and she goes, "Shut the fuck up." Yeah. And that is what Uncle Laser's mom sounds exactly. like, by the way. That is an actual impression of Mama Laser. Uh, she was at the stand-up show that we did on New Year's Eve. Yeah, and you picked her out of the crowd. Picked just her by right out accident. of the crowd. I go, I didn't realize Uncle Laser's mom was going to be in the audience. I'm just doing random ass crowd work, yeah. flying through the crowd, and it was actually it was actually your her. mom, and I had no idea. <laughs> did what it look like, like? Did it look like what you would think? It literally looks like him. <laughs> yeah. they, the apple does not fall far from that fucking cherry tree. You know what I'm fucking saying? Fucking shit. Look at this star power. I mean, the belt buckle is on a. I put that on for her tonight. I don't do this often now. Right. This is a relic, some would Ex say. Explain the meaning or whatever it is. I can't even fathom. Well, I just got it at a flea market, but it's special to my heart. Okay. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's it. That's all it takes. Hey, can I tell you a story, though, Miss Roseanne? Yep. Sure. 
So growing up, my parents got in domestic disputes quite often. That's pretty obvious, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and when I was a boy, I used to just watch your television show while they, was, while they were beating the fuck out of each other, you know what I'm saying, to help me go to sleep. But as I got older, you went from prime time, they used to do your, your reruns on Nick at Night, right? And I'm like 13 or 14 or something, and I'm like jerking off to Taxi Cab Confessions on the HBO. <laughs> Real Sex HBO, and I'd have to put that previous channel button on in case anybody got up and walked in. You don't know how many times I've ejaculated that goddamn harmonica thing on the intro to that fucking song. Special. Every single time. You actually play, you have a harmonica? It's in the truck. Okay. I, I, that lick is actually really hard to play. Oh, I didn't want to come up here and embarrass myself on some, that's a hard lick. That would have been funny, right. though. It would have been funny, but. Hold on, hold on. Some of, the pe some of the women from your joke are trying to go to the restroom <laughs> right now, Uncle Laser, are making a lot of fucking noise. Jesus Christ. Oh, don't Whoa. make a big deal about it. Go take the hot dump you're about to take and fucking hustle back. Jesus Christ. Way to not make a big deal about it. <laughs> My goodness gracious, these fucking people. Uh, they all have to piss and shit all the fucking time? Yeah, make sure to flush and spray. All right. Uncle Laser, so we're finding out you, you were really homeschooled? No, motherfucker. <laughs> homeschooled? No, I went to school with... My graduating high school class was 43 people. Wow. So homeschooled. Yeah. Yeah. How many? 43, and I was okay. soliloquitorian. What? I got a perfect score on my SATs. I have a photographic memory. Special needs? or what Gifted is and talented is what they're saying. <laughs> Gifted and talented, red man. Oh. Incredible, Uncle Laser. What else is another fun fact we'd be surprised to know about you? Something we haven't talked about yet on this show. You want to hear my weirdest sexual encounter? Yeah. Ever. Yeah. <laughs> Roseanne's calling it off. You don't want to hear it? All right. All right. <laughs> So when I was 23, I was working in Ohio, like West Virginia area, right? Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Ohio, you're from Ohio, right? Yeah, but yeah, not but, that part. Okay, yeah, yeah. Not the West I, Virginia part of Ohio. <laughs> Gross. Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ, Laser. You really know how to pick them. Wheeling, West Virginia, what a fucking place. It's a slim, thick part of Ohio. Oh, you know God. I mean? But uh, I met this 40-year-old woman at the bar. She wanted to take me home, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, no big deal, whatever. And... uh. She goes, hey, but I'm married, but my husband is, like, quadriplegic. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, okay, well. Uh, no, I know where this, joke is. this ain't a joke. This is real life. This is no joke about it. So the, the guy's quadriplegic. He's in a wheelchair, right? But she's like, we stay together for the kid or whatever. So, like, he lets me fuck other dudes. I'm like, is he going to watch? Like, because I'll roll his ass into the closet. I'm not no cuck. I ain't never been a cuck in my whole life. Right. Well, we get to her house, and uh, he's at the kitchen table, and he's like, make sure to take your shoes off at the door. <laughs> I said, all right. And so it started getting weird, and she uh, tells me, she's like, hey, I need you to go in the refrigerator. I need you to get this big carrot out of the bottom of the refrigerator. Oh, no. oh my God. This big carrot, not no baby carrot that you buy in a bag. I'm talking, it got the green part on it, you know what I'm saying, like right. the hedge. Yeah. And I walk out there, and I'm like, oh, shit's going to get weird. I probably should go get a condom. So I put my boots on. I walked out to my truck. I got a condom. And I came back in. I did not take them off at the front door. This will come in here in a little bit. Oh, I went back in the room, and I took that carrot. And she's like, I want you to put that carrot up my asshole. I said, deal. <laughs> <laughs> now, Tony, when I say I wallered this fucking carrot out, it was a smooth carrot when I was done with it. I mean, all the way to the green hedges were in there. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. And I just flung it on the ground. Okay. We went to sleep about 7.30 in the morning and fucking sun's peeking through the blinds. I could see a silhouette at the foot of the bed and I could hear a crunching sound. Oh, no. Oh, no. And then I hear, you didn't take your shoes off at the front door. <laughs> and I sit up and the little kid, her five-year-old son, is eating that carrot on that oh, old man's lap. my God. I climbed out of the window and left my boots. My, I haven't been back since. That's why I left Ohio. Wow. Buckeyes? We're like carrot in your asshole and your son's going to eat it, eyes. Oh, my God. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> wow. All right, all right, all right. Roseanne, what do you think about that story? I 
think you're fighting a war inside. <laughs> Listen, Miss Roseanne, I'm I fighting a war every time has I pee. A hold of you. I think the devil's got a hold of you, boy. <laughs> and you better get loose. Yeah. You better get loose of that goddamn demon devil because yeah. that that ain't you. That ain't the real you, because I seen the real you. Now what? I'm gonna tell you true. All right. I see an innocent. <laughs> I see an innocent come up here with a lot of swagger. Oh. You are a comedy innocent. You can make anything funny. Yeah. I want you to make shit funny that's good and lifts people and don't drag their face through a lot of shit. Wow. Because you can do it. And I want you to make that choice. You can do it. And you're going to go a lot farther if you do because people are sick of that nasty, nasty boy poop dick shit. I personally am sick of all that boy bullshit. I want to hear some shit that makes me want to overthrow this motherfucking government and do right. <laughs> Holy shit. And save, and save the good people of this world and this country and everything else and make them do right and save the kids and all that shit. I don't want to hear about your fucking dick and anybody's asshole. <laughs> Oh my God! The Queen has arrived. To, to be fair, it was a carrot but that God was in her asshole. You, it was a carrot in I her asshole. I just pray that God wiener. will come into your heart and show you that what I say is true, and you'll make a turn yes, around, and you will be really, really fucking excruciatingly funny. Yes, you'll ma'am. tear the walls down. You'll talk about you and your inner fight and. Uh, it'll be hilarious. Appreciate that. Yes, ma'am. I cannot believe it. Perhaps, I mean, the wisest, sagest advice that one could give to a guy that's already doing good. She's trying to figure out how to challenge you and expand you because you can handle that challenge and you can push yourself to new levels. And I fucking agree with Roseanne. I think you're, you're both fucking right. It's fun to be funny. But she's challenging you to fucking try to push it to another level. You're above the material you're doing. That's what I'm saying. I and, appreciate that. And that's what I'll this show is all it. about. Well, can I ask you one thing? Oh, here you're we from go. Texas, right? Well, and you're, you're single. You ain't got no wedding Texas. ring on your finger. No, I'm not from Texas. I'm from Utah. I love Mormons, too. But can I take you dancing? No, or can we I'm two a step? Jew. I'm a Jew from Utah. We, oh. It was a hard place to be a Jew. <laughs> My family, we stuck out like a sore thumb over there in Mormon, Utah, because we only had the one mother, <laughs> and it was very difficult. I'm telling you, it was very difficult for our family at that time. I just want to take you dancing later. I just want to spin you around. And... You are a doll, you know, but I have two bad knees that I've got to get replaced, which is why I'm back on the road to raise the funds for <laughs> getting <laughs> You're sweet, though. Thank you, darling. Thank have you, you. Have you been eating your carrots? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, make some goddamn noise for Uncle Laser, everybody. Oh, yeah. The real deal. That's who he really is. He just got a cool homework assignment from one of the all-time greats. I Pre- love that it. was amazing to watch live. I love it. Let's get back to this bucket, huh? You guys having fun out there? Let's meet a new innocent soul. Give someone a chance of their life. Your next comedian out of the bucket goes I'm by so the name. I'm so drunk. You have to forgive me. I'm drunk. You're good. You're good. You're good. We're all a little bit drunk tonight. Make some noise for your next comedian, Luis Manra. Manara or Manra. Luis Manra or Manra. Woo! Here he comes, everybody. Make some noise for Luis, everyone. How's everybody doing? Everybody good? Thank you, thank you. Um, I'm new to Texas, so I've been avoiding H-E-B because in my mind, it stands for hurting every beaner. And, you know, I don't want to walk in there and accidentally walk out with a job just based on appearance. So I've been working at this new little spot called um, Uptown Cheapskate. Y'all heard of it? Uptown Cheapskate? Yeah, we... We buy and sell used clothes, and it's pretty cool, but it gets boring sometimes, you know? So 
My intrusive thoughts start to kick in, so I'm gonna read y'all some of my little thoughts. Give me a second. Damn, white women really do expire faster. Why does my coworker smell like that? These bras smell good, though. Why am I getting hard? Uh, no, yeah, that was definitely a dude. But yeah, man, my girlfriend has a big ass head. I don't like that shit. All women have big ass heads, man. Trust me, like y'all need to accept that women have big ass heads, man. It's pretty. It's funny to me though. Um, I saw her get kicked in the face one time. It was me, but I told her don't move, man. Women don't listen. But yeah, man. Um, pretty sure I'm anti-Semitic. And as soon as I figure out what that means, I'll let you guys know. So yeah, thank you guys. Have a good one. All right, Louis Manra, welcome. Is it Luis? Luis? Luis. Luis. Luis, Mexican. Welcome. Yes, no, I know you're Mexican, <laughs> Luis. There's no doubt Clearly. about that. No reason to do a blood test or anything. We, had, we got you pegged as Mexican. Damn. So, Luis, t- let's talk about it. How long have you been doing stand-up comedy? Um, I want to say I started in around October. Okay. October. There you go. Yeah. October. How's it going? How does it make you feel? Um, pretty good, honestly. I got chills from what you were saying earlier. I swear I got chills. Like, that was beautiful. So just that, what you did was like, yeah, okay. Kind of what I Luis, for, right? this is a new part of the show. Let's keep it moving here. We, are, we know that was great. We're trying to keep it great. More stuff's about to happen. Let's find out more about you. So you started in October. What made you start then? Um, well, I technically started a little bit sooner, but it was just like. What made you start then? <laughs> I, came, I came back from Thailand and it was just like, this is what I want to do. I left school. I so went, what happened in Thailand that made you have this uh, uh, clear just, vision? So you have just, a lady boy's feet over her oh head, right? Exactly. Everyone said that exact same joke. Yeah, I know, because that's what you went there for. <laughs> I wish, I wish. Um, not, um, it was just a lot of writing and it was like during school. Oh, I was in school at the time and then I was just like, I don't want to do school anymore. So I was just writing every night, and to this day, I try writing every night, and yeah, now I'm here. Okay, I like that. What do you do for a living? Um, like I said, well, I used to go to, uh, I, from California originally, I used to go to UC Davis, I don't know if you're familiar with it, and mm-hmm. yeah, now I work at Uptown Cheapskate. <laughs> oh, you <laughs> like, really legit. do? You yeah, work at Uptown yeah. Cheapskate? Everything I talked about is What yeah, do you do at Uptown Cheapskate? <laughs> it's funny. What? Cheapskate. Cheese steak? Cheap skate. Cheap skate? Yeah. Okay. It's a little, Jesus it's fucking just, Christ. <laughs> we have to fix these monitors in no, this my room. Bad. I, get the, I get a little slur when I'm nervous, too. Jesus um, Christ. Yeah, just. What's, what's that, a people. thrift store? Yeah, it's like we buy and sell used clothes. Pretty okay. Cool. Yeah. And what do you do? You do that? You just buy and sell used clothes? No, I just work on retail, working, helping customers, dressing room, things like that. Okay. Basic stuff. All right, yeah. in the dressing room. Sounds creepy. <laughs> what do you do for yeah. fun, Luis? For fun, um, I like going for runs. Um, I'm new. I'm new to Texas, like I said. So I like going into like Texas State because I'm living in San Marcos. And mm-hmm. oh, all right. Oh shit! Yeah, well. Look at these some fucking. Ru- <laughs> it some was su- like suburbanites. Out here. <laughs> you guys are funny, man. I got lost in there actually because I was on my run. My phone died. The rain came down on me. But yeah, it's fun. Fun little things like that. Going out for a run, <laughs> reading. You were on a run and your phone died? Yeah, I went on a run inside Texas State and I got lost on campus. That's okay. pretty cool. Yeah. All right. What else, Luis? I feel like there's more about you. You come from a big Mexican family? Yeah, definitely. How big? Uh, just a lot of cousins that I don't know about. Um, t- I'm an only child, technically, so that's something. Wow, how did yeah. that happen? How are you a, a Mexican only child? That's like a, that's like a, a that's unicorn funny. or something yeah. like that. Uh, my mom technically couldn't have kids, but something about her uterus? I don't know. I'm not too sure, right? I don't know. She I was 14. Right. I, I, think right. I think you're right. I think you're onto something. A, the uterus is a thing, Luis. It was unaligned, right? Yeah, she knows about that. Roseanne knows. Uh-huh. <laughs> Oh, my dad. Roseanne uh, is asking about the father. What about your dad? My dad, he's an alcoholic, but he's cool. I didn't grow up with him, so it's cool. Like, I kind of got to witness him from, like, a different perspective. Uh-huh. I can, I, can I just butt in and tell yeah, you something? You know that I'm loving you. <laughs> I'm you. loving you and telling you something. I'm old, you know. It's probably my fault and not you. But I'm 70, you know. Mm-hmm. But I know, I know you're... You feel, I know, you probably have like 10,000 thoughts a second in your head, and you're really smart, and your writing is terrific, so I can see how you're like spinning in your mind, you know, and I, I did that when I was 
young. How old are you? 21. Oh, uh huh. I, I spent, I was, I, I know where you're at there. Well, because I'm old, maybe, or what have you. Well, I need you to slow down just oh, yeah. a little. I've heard that a lot. Yeah, because right. I can't, it, it's hard for me to understand what you're saying because you're so fast. I, th I can't really understand what you're saying. I, I don't, you know what I mean? No, yeah, I understand. So I wish you would just be a little, take a little bit longer in your talking. Maybe if you took a, a deep few breaths before you come on stage and just like know that you're funny yeah. and be real centered, you won't go so fast because we miss so much. Yeah. You know, but that's what's also funny about you is that we miss so much. So when you put out your album, we're going to have to play it over and over and over <laughs> to get thank what you, we thank missed. You. I appreciate that. See, thank I want, you, so you know, so I'm saying, you know, I'm loving you and I'm seeing your art, mm -hmm. but could you just slow it down for the old folk? God. Yeah. No, definitely. And okay. for and for the almost old folk like me, <laughs> yeah, I didn't understand cheesecake, you. cheesecake, Cheap or yeah. cheapskate. So, uh, you know, she's spot on. And a huge thing is if they don't understand you, they're not going to laugh. So, yeah. you know, enunciation yeah, is absolutely yeah. key. I know it's not something that a lot of 21-year-old Mexicans are interested <laughs> in doing, but, you know. Yeah. If you're going to be performing in front of a, a yeah, but audiences. you'll get that as you go, as you're in front of an audience, you it'll get you'll get it, and Thank that you. you'll learn it, you Thank know. Thank you so much. Yep. But um, yeah, just slow down and enunciate better. That'll Definitely. that'll kick you up about seventy sure. percent. Boom! There you go, Luis Manra. Congratulations, you got pulled out of the bucket. Here's a little joke book from the great Boneside. There he goes, Luis. Everybody, he's getting a gel blaster. Just giving out gel blasters to some of the people out of the bucket tonight. Huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Roseanne's having fun. We're doing it. How you doing out there, audience? We good? Your next comedian out of the bucket goes by the name of Kent Hunter, everyone. Kent Hunter is next on Kill Tony. This looks like another new name. Always fun to meet new people here. How many of you like it when comedians do good on this show? How many of you like it when comedians do bad on the show? Bunch of evil fucks here tonight. I swear to God, I gotta get an old lady condo down here in Austin and be able to come and hang out. Yeah. I'm loving the comedy going on here. It's revolutionary shit. It's very next level comedy. It's very cool. I fucking love to hear it. How about one more time for Kent Hunter, everybody? Yeah. So I used to date this girl with a loose labia. For those of you who don't know what that means, whenever she would walk around, her pussy lips would clap like a Newton's cradle. I mean, I'm telling you, if she got really excited, they start spinning like the cleaners at Walmart. To make her feel better, I started tying them up like little balloon animals. She was insecure. I think the transgender people have an unfair advantage in life. And when I say that, I don't mean like women swimming or anything. I mean sexually. I don't think it's fair that they can walk in to build a dick and customize their penis like a lightsaber at Disney World. I feel like we can make this more fair by having to draw it out of a hat. Oh, like, oh, you're upset he got the 12 inch Punisher and you got the four inch with a weird tip. That's just life. Learn how to use your tongue like the rest of us. I don't like getting blackout drunk because it reminds me a lot about having surgery. I mean, you wake up in a bed that's not yours, you're in pain, and there's usually some fat chick with her hands all over you. Kent Hunter making his Kill Tony debut. Welcome, Kent. Thank you. Hell yeah. Aren't you adorable? Look at you. Where are you from? South Carolina. South Carolina. Hell yeah. I was going to guess underneath Uncle Laser's bed is where you're from. <laughs> This is incredible. You seem like a little ghost of a hillbilly's past or something like that. <laughs> South Carolina. Very interesting. What, what brings you to Austin? I wanted to come out here and chase my dream, do comedy. I love it. That's incredible. Make sure you talk right into the tip of that right, microphone. Sorry. So you're chasing your dream. You're doing stand-up. When did you get to Austin? Uh, about a month ago. About a month ago. And now you live here? Yes. So you've been going up. You've been signing up for this show. You've been doing open mics. How's it going? Pretty good. I mean, I found some mics I like. 
How old are you? 19. 19 years old, moving here. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck you, University of South Carolina. We got him. Hell yeah. Out here chasing your dreams. You have siblings? Yes. And would they all have normal, like, nine-to-five jobs? Yeah. What do your parents say about you moving to Austin to chase one of the hardest dreams humanly possible? I mean, I think they were ready to just kick me out of the house because they were very supportive. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. You seem like the kind of guy that comes from a family that's very supportive. You know what I mean? <laughs> from behind. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Thank you for the tags. You got, these, you got the shitting lady excited. Good job, Red Band. Uh, so let's talk about it. How do you survive? How do you make money? Uh, well, right now I'm unemployed, so I'm okay. trying to find a job. Okay. But Wh- what do you want to do? What could you be good have at? Have you ever had a job? Yes, I have. What was it? I worked in a machine shop in South Carolina. Yep. Doing what? We would uh, take metal and turn it into parts for other companies. Mm-hmm. How'd you do that? Just go, hey, abracadabra or what? <laughs> yeah. I mean, all I did was press a button. We had a whole lot smarter people for that. You just press a button and a machine did it? Yes, ma'am. I love it. So what do you, how, how are you going to survive here? How much money do you have saved up? Uh, I had about eight grand when I moved out here. Okay. And I'm still doing pretty good with that. Now you have a cocaine habit. Yeah. You're down to $200 yeah. in Whataburger dollars. Yeah. How old were you when you first thought you were fu- when you knew you were funny? When I knew I was funny? I'm uh-huh. still waiting for that. <laughs> oh, look at you. A little humility. Oh, my goodness. A little humble warrior we have here tonight. Absolutely incredible. Interesting. What do you like to do for fun? You're 19 years old. Tell us, what are 19-year-olds up to nowadays? I like to steal traffic cones. That's... Really? Yes. I stole one last week. Wow. What do you do with them after you steal them? Well, I, I've, so I've stolen one out of every state I've lived in. Uh-huh. And, uh, I mean, the one I have now from here is just sitting in my room. Wow. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) Where are the other ones? Uh, In my grandparents' garage in South Carolina. (laughs) Wow. Do you like, like, holding them up and talking through them? Like, I am Darth Vader or anything fun like that? Or why do you like traffic cones? Great question. (laughs) I don't know. It's just... (laughs) <laughs> Unbelievably great question. Wow. I mean, geez, Louise, I didn't realize I had, a, I had a brilliant genius as a co-host until the street cone question came out. Like wear it as a hat. <laughs> <and you laughs> put a hat <on. laughs> I love it. So tell us more about you. What do you like to do for fun? Like when, when you're not stealing street cones, like it doesn't seem like that would take a lot of the time of your day. Uh, I mainly, since I moved here, it's just Mike's. Just mics. Yep. Have you made friends? A few, yeah. Is Other it going comics. better or worse than you thought it would? Like, explain to the many people listening, wondering if maybe they want to move to Austin and try stand-up comedy. There might be an 18-year-old out there listening, and you could be their hero right now. <laughs> explain I mean, what it was like moving here. I mean, at- it's good. I mean, I was worried about a bunch of the mics not being 21. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, there's been so many places and so many supportive people. It just helps me I get on stage and just try. I love it. Yeah. I love it. But wait, you're 19 and you're talking about blacking out drinking. So does that happen? Do you drink? Yes. How do you drink? How do you Fake do IDs that? Fake IDs are a crazy thing, man. What? Fake IDs are a crazy thing. Oh, hell yeah. This guy just walking around with fake IDs and street cones. <laughs> this guy yeah. doesn't give a fuck. Holy shit. I love it. What's your living situation like? You by yourself? Uh, no, I, I rent a house with some roommates. How many roommates? Three. Three roommates. So four people total. How many bathrooms? Three. Ooh, that's yeah. pretty good. That's yeah. fancy living. How yeah. far is the drive? Uh, it took me about 15 minutes to get here tonight. Not that bad. That, that's closer than Red Band. That's true. <laughs> Red Band settled for Pflugerville, so you're doing better than him. <laughs> He settled. He's like, wow, I can buy a mansion for $100,000? I'll take it. <laughs> it's worth $2 million now. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What's your love life like, Kent? What's your... Uh, ninth- since I moved here, non-existent. 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 At all? Uh, I mean, I'm on the apps. Just nothing happening so far since I moved here. Nothing at all? Have you kissed a girl since moving here? Not since moving. Have you ever kissed a Texas yes. girl? Texas girl, no. Really? No. 
Did Is there ever... a girl that wants to come up here and give Ken his first Texas kiss? Is there a hero out here? You want to? Will you do that? We have the best fans in the world here on Kill Tony. I like to make magical moments. Getting his first ever Texas kiss. Ken Hunter. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. Absolutely unbelievable. And she's shaped like a street cone. So this must be <laughs> love at first sight. I'm going to take her home or put her in your grandparents' garage or something like that. <laughs> Kent, I like your style. You came out you're, you, with really, really good jokes. 19 years old. You have the world by the balls. Roseanne, any, any last words for Kent? Yes, I think you're funny and you're cute and you're very young. And so, um, you know, you're likable. People like you. Thank you. And um, so just keep doing it. And good luck here in uh, wherever, Austin. Fuck yeah. Kent Hunter, you're getting a big gel blaster. Look at that. His net worth just went up another hundred bucks with that giant gel blaster. Let's do it. We have another regular, another extremely special treat for all of you. How many of you have been fans of this show for a long time? Well, then, you probably know what's about to happen. One of the great writers, one of the great comedians, one of the great roasters on all of planet Earth. This is Kill Tony's own David Lucas, everybody. Oh. My. God. One of the greats. Legend of the show. Does it every week. Another new minute. David Lucas, everybody. Come on. Yeah. Uh, money changes you a lot. I just uh, recently moved to an all-white neighborhood. <laughs> and my neighbor called the cops on me for walking my dog. Uh, the police were like, we are so sorry. I was like, no, nah, that bitch did a good job. <laughs> Continue to call the cops on niggas that look like me. What is <laughs> We gotta keep this neighborhood safe, bitch. What is you doing? <laughs> I'm a horrible neighbor if you're black, man. I am, bro. I, like, don't invite me to your loud ass barbecue, nigga. What the fuck wrong with you, man? I'll come eat up all your food and then call the cops on your bitch ass. Like, I'm like a Karen, you know what I'm saying? I'm like a Karen, but I'm black, so I guess I'm a Darren. You know what I mean, bro? <laughs> there we go, thank you, bro. Holy shit, that's what I'm talking about. These fucking guys. I yeah. mean, that is just an incredible minute of brand new material. Yeah. The fact that you do this every single week is completely insane. Always getting a little bit better, more confident, talking about shit that only truly you can talk about. That's been a theme coming from Roseanne, who made, I mean, an entire fucking career out of truly talking about what she knows, truly being original. And yeah. here you are taking that perspective of being a black guy in a white neighborhood, calling the police, <laughs> doing the right thing, making your situation absolutely hysterical. Roseanne, Roseanne you look well, good in that I... leather girl. I heard you try to uh, get that condo in Austin. Let me know if you want a nigga in that extra bedroom. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I'm 70 fucking years old, honey. Uh, I, we ain't got to do shit. Huh? <laughs> we ain't got to do nothing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Leave it to my diabetic friend to try to find a new sugar mama here tonight. <laughs> Tony, you dressed up like you about to fuck Hunter Biden, nigga. Shut oh, your come on. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Get your motherfucking non-binary prom king looking ass up out of Oh, my God. I might be you, the prom king, but you're the burger king. Shut the fuck up. Son of a bitch. I know you saw Sam Smith do that interview talking about a fisherman, nigga. You a fisher day. Yeah, I'm a fisher them. <laughs> so, uh, why you so red, nigga? You gotta tell us if your boyfriend beating on you. What the oh fuck my god, up? is that what happens? Or do your ass got a spicy tampon in, nigga? What the fuck? 
I would love to see what color your skin tone would be if you were white. <laughs> You'd be fucking gray like Red Band over here. Your ass dressed for the PGA, Penis Golf Organization, <laughs> Association, whatever. It's like. <laughs> You're dressed for the KFC, you son of a bitch. <laughs> there is no. Come on. Don't oh, no. you fucking. We're all, yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> no. What's up, boo? What's I happening? Like, I like how you do. Thank you, baby. Because here's what you do. You got them big hooves. You remind me of my first baby mama. Jesus. <laughs> what did he say? I couldn't hear. You got them big hoop earrings. You remind me of my first baby mama. David, let her I get do? her fucking thing out. <laughs> yes, Jesus Christ. How you're like children? yourself at a movie theater right now. <laughs> let how the fucking queen talk. Go ahead, baby. What you got? How many children you got? Two. Two. We can and get a How many surrogate. baby mamas? Two. Two baby mamas. Yeah. I'm a nigga. I got know. five children by three uh, baby daddies. You just as black as me. <laughs> uh, yeah. You are just as black uh-huh. as me. I fuck yeah. with it. I knew I loved you for a reason, girl. Hell yeah. All that different sperm and shit flow through your yeah, body. I know, right? I love it. That's right. why them vaginal walls ain't shit right now. <laughs> 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 you. Yeah, oh, yeah, you're yeah. fierce. <laughs> Shit, you're fierce. Yeah. Oh, I just love you. Thank you, bud. And you know what I love? Your girlfriend who I also... Come on, you fucking up my pimping. What you doing? No. <laughs> what is no. you doing right now? No. What are you doing? No. By what? No, I'm saying... Cause <laughs> I, what? I, listen, I'm... What a, is you doing? By what? No. I what? Meant, <laughs> I meant... <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> You want me to call NBC on your ass again? <laughs> what is you doing? What are you doing? Listen. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. I am an old Jewish woman. I stick my nose in everybody's business, whether they fucking like it or not. Yeah. my nose in all the comic girlfriends business because I'm a woman I'm always looking up for the women right so I know how comics are they'll fuck anything if you hold its head <laughs> the male the man come okay so I asked your girlfriend who I had the privilege to meet because she's a beautiful woman and I asked her I said is he nice to you Is he a good man? And he's nice to you. That's what I want to know about a comedian, right? She said, oh, he is a lovely man, and he is so good to me. So that's why I love you. Wow, look at that. I knew you were Jewish because you got that shirt out of the broiler. Oh, horrible my. Joke. See, horrible what joke. did I tell you? You horrible, cannot horrible, have, horrible. you son horrible. of a bitch. Don't worry about it. I'm glad you came here, boo. You don't need to hear that shit. It was bad. Tell me. I said, you I don't you. want the Jew evil eye on your ass. Oh, shit. She's going to put a I need another Jew in my life. I got oh. three. My agent, manager. <laughs> yeah. I need one more. <laughs> yeah, I need one more. I need a Jew on my side. Well, I, God bless you. You do need you, one more. You believe in God? You look like you do sorcery. <laughs> Somebody bring me my Ouija board. No, I do. I believe in God, absolutely. Oh, I get it. That's yeah. Good yes. thing. That's why you moved to Texas. I get it. Yeah. That's right. God and racism. Yeah. No, not racism. <laughs> Don't give me that bullshit. Don't you? You dare can't be racist with bullshit. three baby daddies. What the fuck? No. Fuck no. There ain't nothing racist about you, boo. Listen, listen. What's happening? No. Don't be bringing that shit. <laughs> Don't be bringing any of that shit. Because they, we can't be, we got to all get together and fight the people that's trying to kill all of us. Come on now. Yeah. Yeah. I love this. You, I, can't, you, can't, you got to stop falling asleep to them YouTube videos. <laughs> 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 Aliens are in the ocean. I see a spin-off podcast in your two's future right here. Call it fucking Chocolate Bar or something like that. If you were on it, we'd call it Nutty Buddy. Oh, you son of a bitch. You son of a bitch. Get him out of here. 
Yeah, Ladies and gentlemen, fun. one of the greats. Catch oh. him on tour, David Lucas. Yeah. Hey. Plug it. Make sure you uh, catch me March 3rd and 4th. I'm in Viva Las Vegas. Pull up on your boy. Thank you. Hell yeah, Las that. Vegas, Nevada. Early March. Get tickets now. Wise guys, I do believe. Wise guys, right? In Las Vegas, Nevada. Wow. What a force. That was awesome. One more time for David Lucas. <laughs> yeah. We are doing this shit tonight, everybody. We're going back to the bucket. Your next comedian goes by the name of Jet G. Jet G. Very simple name. J E T G. We ain't going nowhere. We ain't going nowhere. We can't be stopped now. Because it's bad boys for them. Here he is, everybody. Jet G. Make some noise for him, everyone. These guys wait all night for this. So I grew up a pastor's kid, and I felt this pressure to get married. This woman came up to me at church, and she goes, God brought my brother a wife. Why hasn't he brought you a wife? And I had to tell her the truth. I said, uh, because my God loves me. That's why. I'm sure God did bring your brother a wife as punishment. I've lost more friends to marriage than police violence. I think marriage is the real nigga killer here. I grew up so Christian, I wasn't allowed to watch Batman. I had to watch Bible Man. It was Willie Ames in a purple satin cape. It was traumatic for everybody involved. I grew up uh, a little bit of a bad, a little bit of a bad boy in the church. I got in trouble for a lot of premarital handholding. It was bad. It was terrible. But I just realized, you know, I'm not my dad. You know, when my dad was my age, he had a car, two motorcycles, and he was a virgin. I drive a scooter and I have hella hose. Uh, so. <laughs> It's a lot of that going on. Duh? I'm, I'm ready. Let's go. I, don't, I can't see the time. That's what's freaking me out here. It's the cap means you're at a minute, so you have a few seconds to wrap it up. Let's just put a ribbon on it. Let's you have, put a you have anything else you wanted to say? No. Okay. Really. Weird way to close, but great set. Jet Thanks. G. I love it. You can hold on to that microphone, Jet G. Welcome. This is your first time on the show. Yes, sir. How long have you been doing stand-up? Uh, almost four years. Three years? Four. Four years. Where at? Uh, I just moved here from L.A. about a year ago. Okay. So how long were you in L.A. for? Two years. Where were you before that? Detroit. Detroit. So you made the move from Detroit to L.A. and then the pandemic started or did you move during the pandemic? I moved during the pandemic. Interesting maneuver, but better than Detroit. That's for goddamn oh, sure. Oh, come on, man. Come on, guys. What do you mean, come on? Come on, man. Come on what? Detroit treats you survival skills, bro. Yeah. You can survive Detroit. You can survive anywhere. I agree. Great place to be from. Great place to get the fuck out of. <laughs> what are you talking? You want to go back there? I mean, you know. All right. Oh, my God. We have a special treat for you. <laughs> I have a one-way ticket to fucking Detroit. You're going to love it since you're so proud of your roots. Now, I'm from Youngstown, Ohio. I know exactly Oh, what that's Detroit. where this is coming from. Exactly. Yeah, we're from the same hot death. <laughs> you a Buckeye? What? Are you a Buckeye? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went to U of M, so. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, in that case, it was nice meeting you. Uh <laughs> Jet, let's talk about it. So what was L.A. like for the two years during the pandemic? Explain uh, to these people that man, might not I was, know. I was a private school teacher for a while, mm -hmm. so that was boring. Right. Yeah, you know, I was the youngest black dude at an old white school. So, right, right. You know. Okay. What else about Los Angeles? Um, I don't know. I, I, it's a very plastic town. How long have you um, been here? I moved here last February. So what are the differences that you notice right off the bat? Um, there's a lot of, like, man perms in Austin. There's a lot of Weird Al Yankovic-looking dudes getting a lot of chicks. Uh -huh. And I don't know how you're doing it. Because right. you would not survive in L.A. at all. No disrespect. Right. No, you're right. Uncle Lazy. It's true. It's true. You know. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So, Jet, let's talk about it. What do you do for work? Uh, I just quit teaching, so give me a round of applause for that. Okay. So I'm, I'm just doing this full-time. I bartend sometimes. That's, that's what I'm up to. 
What do you do for, I mean, how, you're bartending sometimes? Yeah. Okay, so you're making money bartending. Yeah. Around here? Yep. Okay. And uh, what do you do for fun? Uh, let's see. I don't remember, bro. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> Okie dokie. Uh, I used to do martial arts, but I don't do martial arts anymore. Like at nighttime, what do you do when you're not doing stand-up? Oh, I just, I just, you know, thug around on the east side, mm. popping around. That's about it. Right. Okay. Right. <laughs> okay. Um, have you ever been married? No. No. Why, why are you so down on marriage? I mean, you know, I think, I think marriage is, uh, I think people get, marriage to, get married to escape a lot of the times. So I just see a lot of people trapped in really shitty relationships. Have you, been, have you ever been in a shitty relationship? I mean, I'm almost 30, so yes. I, I like to hear about them. Ooh. Yeah, I know you got that in you. I'd love to hear about it. It's torturous, right? Yeah, it's it's. I'd tough. love to hear you talk about it. I mean, maybe. And then maybe. and then I, cause I can, cause those jokes about marriage are so funny. Thank you. That you do, they're just classic funny. Thank you so much. And I love how you bring the church into it too. That's very new and fresh. Thank you. Um, I, you know, it is saying, well, God didn't bring you. Oh, it's so good. Uh, but I'd like to hear about how you personally suffered to get to that point. Because I know you did. It's been, Who's it's your been, first girlfriend? Let's hear it. Who's you want to he, he hear about Brittany? You wanna oh, hear about I want to hear about Brittany, yeah. How old were right. you? So I was 13. She was 16. Uh, I had straight A's. She might have had cocaine possession on her record. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was a very interesting experience. But I was kind of a geek because I was a pastor's kid. So I was trying to like transition from like where's my glasses to where's my hug. And she, she helped me pull that off. You know? she had, I remember we had a, you know what a church lock-in is? Uh-huh. We had a church lock-in. Right, like a sleepover night where everybody... It's this idea of you locking a whole bunch of horny teenagers in a gym building and expecting nothing to go wrong. Right. Um, <laughs> so, long story short, she comes in, and it's like an all-majority black church. She's a white girl. She rose up in, like, booty shorts and a crop top. She's, like, breaking everybody's neck. She's got a tramp stamp. Oh, shit. And, uh, it was wild. It was a wild time, but... Long story short, like, my friends were like, man, Brittany doesn't really like you, and Brittany did like me. And it, it, it made, it touched my little heart. Um, it did you have sex with her? I can't, I can't reveal that on here. My mom might listen later. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? So, so you that's did. A, that's a hot yes, so let's talk yeah, about it. Yeah, that's a hot yes. <laughs> sorry, sorry, mama, but Brittany, Brittany, Brittany fucked your boy. yeah, Brittany. I mean... It set me on a path of dating a lot of white girls with tattoos, which I no longer do anymore. <laughs> Is that your thing? You're into white girls with tattoos? I was into that for a long time, but I value my life, so. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. So what are you into now? Uh, white girls with tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't know, man. I'm okay. still trying to figure that out. Mm. Okay. S- spoken like a true pastor's son. <laughs> It right. wasn't torture to be a pastor, son, though. It was. It was a weird. It was very strange. Did you get hit a lot because you was bad or what? I mean, my mom. I mean, my mom found me in the sleeping bag with Brittany and yanked me out of the sleeping oh, bag no. in front of everybody. Uh oh. What, what was that'll the... scar you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was. It was pretty traumatic. Uh oh. Let me ask you this oh, before I let guy. you go. You're yep. the son of a pastor, so yeah. you had to behave yourself. So what was something rebellious that you did when you were a little kid? Was there something that you Were had? you afraid to rebel? We used to change. We weren't allowed to listen to rap music, so we would change rap songs to make them Christian. Oh, shit. <laughs> so, like, instead of it's hot in here, it's holy in here was a big hit. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah, keep that. Yeah, that's hot, right? It is so holy in here. Yeah. Wow. Uh. Damn. <laughs> These guys are unbelievable. Yeah, that's good, right? It's getting holy in here, so put on all your clothes. It is getting so holy, I'm going to put my clothes on. <laughs> that's, that's, that's pretty much the gist. That's a good joke. That's Instead good of Nelly, right? it's Helly. All right. That's Jet a good G, bit. so much fun. Joke. Again, you know, a, a very, very 
I, then I love it. I couldn't have written it like this. But I love that the theme of the night coming from Roseanne to all the comedians is talk about what you can talk about. Talk yeah. about what makes you original. And you came up past her son and you fucking did it. Beat for beat for beat for beat. Amazing stuff. You Super know what? fucking cool. You know what, comedy, one, one thing I learned from my idols, you know, and I'm going to name them because I feel like I should, right? Mm-hmm. I learned, I was so lucky to... Uh, become friends with my idols, which was unheard of. But like, you know, like uh, Richard Pryor was my friend, Rodney Dangerfield was my friend. Wow. Dallas Diller, you know, um, so many I can't even uh, name because I can't remember because I'm old. But just the greats. And uh, they told me, they taught me Johnny Carson and things. But anyway, the more personal you are, the more universal it is. See, we don't know that as we ha- we got to learn these things about comedy. The more personal, the more it everybody will get it because we're all just the same, you know. Yeah. So, I love what you did. Well, I love everything you did. It's good writing. It's fresh and it's different. But I love what you did off your jokes when we were just talking here about, you know, it's getting holy in here. All that stuff is really, really good. And it's just you. It's very personal. And, and we really like it. So, Thank you so, so much. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Here's a big joke book by the great Bonesai. Thank you. Make some noise for Jet G, everyone. Yeah. Let's do that. You guys want one more special treat, huh? Uh, it's unbelievable. And it's about to get a little bit crazy, Roseanne. I told you about this guy earlier. We met this young man three weeks ago for the first time ever. Six months into his comedy career. And he's been on the show three times since then. I'm giving him another spot right here, right now. He's mute, has cerebral palsy, and we absolutely love him. This is, again, the third set ever from new Kill Tony legend, Aaron Belial, everybody. A fucking sensation. I went. A goddamn sensation. I was drinking with this man for fucking five hours last night having somehow the best conversations I've ever had with anyone. And how about one more time, ladies and gentlemen, this is a visitor from Canada. This is the great Aaron Belial, everyone. The most interesting thing about having cerebral palsy is that it makes other people fucking stupid. People come up to me and start gesturing at me, yelling real slow like, Hello, can I pet your dog? And I'm like, oh my, are you okay? Are you having a fucking stroke? Someone come help. Call 911. I can't do it. I mean, I guess I could. I sound a lot like someone who is having a stroke. But I still sound less like an idiot than you do. Wow. Another new minute from Aaron Belial. So what's wild is that last night I'm out here in Austin, enjoying a beautiful Sunday evening off, having some drinks, watching my friend's Nether Hour play a super fucking sold out, super fire capacity, people standing on picnic tables and fucking rooftops to see them. And the place is so packed, and out of nowhere, I see Aaron leaning up in a fucking corner with his cane and everything, just stuck. He can't move, fucking nothing, doesn't have a drink, the poor guy. So we I get him a drink. Long story short, we get 
we drank for hours last night, and I literally absolutely saw a woman come up to him and literally do what he just said they do in his joke. Literally goes, oh my goodness, hello. I saw you a couple weeks ago on Kill Tony. You're so great. Is there anything I can do? Is there anything you want? Is there anything you need? They all talk to him like this, and I go, you should have a fucking joke about that. And he goes, I already do have a joke about that. I think I might do it tomorrow night. I love it. Aaron, you're absolutely killing it. Tell us more. What's going on in this crazy world? You're here with the great Roseanne motherfucking bar. She's been warned about you. So over the weekend, I rented an apartment and paid through PayPal, and there was processing time. So the lady starts texting me, telling me to get out, or she's going to call the cops. And I'm like, all right, go ahead. Her boss shows up knocking and sees me. Oh, shit. Three trillion... Oh, he takes one look at me, and he's like, oh, fuck. I'm sorry. You can stay. My bad. And I get like 15 apology texts from the lady, and they give me half my money back. Uh. This isn't a cane. It's a magic fucking wand. <laughs> Oh my goodness. It's hilarious how behind a phone I'm just another asshole, but as soon as they see me, it's like, oh God, oh God, I'm gonna get canceled. I'm making this cripple homeless. What have we done? This is amazing. So I cried a little bit to get an extra 25% back. Fuck them. Some of that money. Wow. Incredible, Aaron Belial. Absolutely amazing. Uh, what else is going on? I don't even know what, where to fucking start or end or begin. Texas is fucking wild man. Yeah. Last time I was here, I had a bartender mooing at me like a cow when I asked for meat nachos. Tonight I was eating down the street, and the bartender almost stabbed a guy. Welcome to America. Yeah. It's true. It's true. It's wild. It is insane out here on these streets. Uh... Aaron, you're having fun. Roseanne, this is your first time seeing Aaron. Are you okay? <laughs> Roseanne's like, oh shit, the aliens have invaded. <laughs> I saw this on a YouTube video last night. It's just virtual reality to her. I'm stunned. Yeah. Your, what? Your level of self-awareness is fucking off the charts. Yeah. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> you are like an alien. Oh my God, the shit you're exposing to us about ourselves is, is too fucking much, man. You're the next fucking level of genius comedy. Wow. Look at that. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. Wow. There was a lot of typing that went into that. I don't know. I think he's no, got No, I love you. You're so brave and beautiful, and the stuff you're saying is so well written and thought out and hilarious. I mean, did you always know you were funny? Ooh. That's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> What did you do? What did you do before you had all these devices, though? I mean, was there a time in your life where you didn't have these communication devices? Yeah, he was at one point the funniest etch a sketch comedian. I was always an asshole, <laughs> but I had to kind of change. No, Sorry, but I'm I stepped, serious. On, I stepped on your line. No, there. but I'm serious. I'm serious, though. <laughs> was there a time in your life where you didn't have access to communication devices? And don't be a silly ass. I love you, ass. you look Tony. Did you get a sponsorship from Baby Gap? Wait, what? No, Did you just seriously. fucking take a shot at me, dude? What the fuck just... Shut was that up. on me? I want to 
want my answer. He's trying to make fun of me right now. I the want su- my answer. I know, I know. We're going to get I it for you. I want my answer. The son of a bitch just takes shots at me. I don't want you to be... Listen, I don't want you to be a silly fucking asshole when you answer me neither. Yeah. I want a fucking serious answer from you. Yeah, and stop making fun of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Stop making fun of me, God damn it! I'll fucking break your left wrist, You ungrateful dude. little bastard. <laughs> I'll break it back into regular <laughs> position. <or something. laughs> no, but I, I just want to know. I just want to know. I started with a pencil, then I graduated to this big 10-pound speech box. Then a cell phone. A 10-pound speech box. That's Shit. fucking interesting. Huge and heavy. And you had to fucking carry it? Did you just l- keep it on your left forearm or whatever? Like, how did you do that? <laughs> do you have to blow in a straw to make well, it talk? I just love you. I just love you, and I love what you do. You did? I love what you do, and I love you. You're, you're just great. It is true. Aaron Belial is coming on the fucking scene. We're trying to make him an American citizen. He's from Canada. If you couldn't tell, that's what's wrong with him. Uh, I say it I say it every I love time you too. Oh, shit. But not you. Jesus Christ. What? I love you too, but not you. Why do you why do you I'm literally like the nicest guy to this fucking guy. I swear to God. You being mean to me is the karma that gave you whatever you have. I'm telling you, right now. It's reverse. It's reverse. This is it. Well, okay. What the fuck but was seriously, I just your level of self-awareness is just incredible. I mean, it, it, it's just incredible to see because that's like the number one thing of comics is a level of self-awareness. So congratulations. Aaron Belial. Anything else, Aaron? You're the nicest person. Aw, look at that. It's just because I'm drunk. (laughs) I would love to have you on the secret show sometime. (laughs) Yeah, if you're here on Thursday, you're in it. Aaron Belial's in the mix. This fucking guy's a goddamn sensation. Anything else you want to say or fucking whatever you call that that you do? Anything else you want to type? You're really typing our ears you off tonight. You asked me what I want last week. Like 907... You asked me what I want last week. Uh-huh. Like 976,356 times. And I didn't answer. Uh-huh. Do you mind if I answer that now? Oh, well, I'm, well, now it's off the table. But, uh... No, go ahead. Go ahead, yeah. What do you want? Big picture. I want a comedy career. I want to make a living doing things I enjoy. And making people laugh. Sharing my story. And in honor of that goal, I think the best thing to ask for in this moment is a golden ticket. Wow. That's a lot. Nobody's ever asked for it. It's only been given out once in our entire uh, two and a half years in Austin, Texas. Only eight or nine people around the world have a golden ticket, which Roseanne's asking me, which I'll tell you, that is uh, something that means that they can perform on any show, any time, any Kill Tony. They can do a new minute and an interview, any show, wherever it is in the world. If they're there, they get to be on this show. And God damn it, you know what? I'll call your fucking bluff. You're a new golden ticket winner, Aaron Belial. Yep, there you go. Any fucking time. Let's go. Yeah, you got it. There you go. Roseanne motherfucking bar. And I'm, I'm going to offer something on top of that, but your golden ticket. I'm going to help you with your material. I'm going to help you edit and fix up and write your material because I love it. Wow. Holy shit. One of the greatest comedians of all time offering to mentor... Aaron Belial. My goodness gracious, it just doesn't get much fucking cooler than that. Ladies and gentlemen, the ninth or 10th ever golden ticket winner in the history of the show. My man, Aaron Belial. Hell yeah. 
We're making motherfucking dreams come true here. Next level. He's next level, soul deep next level. Shit. You guys feel like you're part of something special here tonight? Should we go to this bucket one more time? This is where we found Aaron Belial. This bucket is where we found Michael Lair, David Lucas, William Montgomery, Hans Kim. And right now, I present to you, make some noise for Arthur Martyrosian. Arthur Martyrosian, your final bucket pull of the night. We got movement? No. Nope. Arthur Martyrosian? No, it's no, nothing. A nope. thumbs down. What? All right, I'll pull another name out. Samantha Mini. Samantha Mini. All right. Here she is, everybody. One more time for Samantha. I've been in a relationship for five years. Uh, not with the same guy, but just passing the baton until someone gets it right. I, uh, I do this really fun thing where I like to ignore red flags. Um, it builds character, that's what I tell my therapist. Um, but I remember I, one guy I dated, we were driving around, and he's like, we're about to pass my childhood home. I was like, dude, we're in the middle of the woods. <laughs> what do you mean you grew up here? <laughs> it's mildly concerning. I also dated a guy where very early on into the relationship, um, I ignored a ton of red flags. He was uh, playing video games and drinking White Claws. And that's not the red flag yet. Uh, I noticed like a bunch of the cans were full. Um, and I was like, all right, dude, grabbed a bunch of backups, respect, whatever. And I didn't feel like drinking that night, and it's a good thing, because I found out the next morning those cans were filled with piss. <laughs> And I found out because he dumped them in the kitchen sink. I went on to date him for a year. There you go, Samantha Mini. Little gross story. There you go. Samantha, you were just on this show when? Last week? Last week. Okay, here you are, two weeks in a row. You have a lot of luck. Yeah. Does that happen a lot in your life? No. No. Not even. Okay. This is insane. What's insane? Twice in two weeks? I there don't you know. go. Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, what's going on in life? Let's talk about it. What did um, we not find out last week? Was there anything after last week's episode where you're like, I wish I would have said that or that? Oh, everything. Um, right. So when I moved here, I had like an idea of what my life would look like, and I'm currently living in Buda with a 60-year-old man that oh. does porn photography. Wow. Beautiful. Yeah. So not what I expected, but... No, right. I saw it, yeah. So how do you end up with a 60-year-old man in Buda? This sounds like <laughs> Craigslist shit. This. What is your rent in, out in Buda with a 60-year-old man? One hand job a week. Is that true? Is that true? $400. <laughs> okay, 400 a month. Mm -hmm. And how far of a drive is Buda again? I think 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Ooh. And you're originally from Buffalo, yes. right? So a 30-minute drive for... 400 bucks is like a great deal or something like that, right? Yeah, I paid slightly more in Buffalo, but I had two roommates, but everything was five seconds away. Right. Um, what do you think about 20 minutes on a blowjob? <laughs> Red band. Red band. I really don't want to work with you anymore. If anybody knows how to work a soundboard, I'm hiring. I'm taking a... Jesus Christ. <laughs> But what would you do for, uh, with that? Like, what would you do? I'm just curious at this point. What would I do for 20 no, minutes? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Nothing. We're kidding, Samantha. Uh, so tell us something else that we don't know about you. Um, my dad is a juggalo. Oh. <laughs> what is he? Close. <laughs> what is he? A juggalo. What's that? An insane clown posse fan. Oh. And he's stone cold sober, so he's doing it on purpose. <laughs> wow. Uh, 
<laughs> Incredible. What about your mom? She's great, you know, love that lady. She's normal-ish. Ish? Yeah. What's that How mean? come you have such low self-esteem that you're with all these fucktards? Forever and ever, and you ignore red flags. I want to know why you do that. I mean, I should. I just am interested because I married Tom Arnold. So I just am interested. Crazy red dick flag. is good. <laughs> what? Crazy dick is good. You're Crazy talking to a, dick? You're talking to a lady that doesn't have vaginal walls anymore. Shut you be up. careful. You're, right. you're preaching <laughs> no, to the choir. You, she has an insane clown pussy. Did you say crazy pussy. dick is good? <laughs> yes. No, wait a minute. She said crazy dick is good. Yes. That is a fucking first that any woman has ever said, and by God, you are so fucking right. Crazy dick is good. Unfortunately, right? Yeah. Oh, talk more about that, bitch. Am I right, women? Why do we always go after crazy dick? Yeah. Then she knows. She fucked Tom Arnold for a few years. Right? <laughs> That's what I mean. T tell us about that. Why do you like crazy dick? Yeah. Good question. Let it, let it flow out of you, whatever the answer is. Let her tell us. Crazy dick is good. I, I dated a guy who used to put my entire foot in his mouth. I think that was oh, fun. Damn. Yeah. Look at these things, too. Like, yeah. it's <laughs> Why was that fun? Because who does that? So you are just, you just like that it's different. Yeah, I don't like happy marriage sex. That's boring. I see. Just someone breathing in your ear. I yeah. kill myself. Somebody humping on you like a big old fucking hog. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. You like, you like the esoteric, putting the foot in the mouth and this and that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I want to hear about that. That's that's new, right? That's yeah. some new shit. Yeah. It's a crazy one. The comedian before you put his foot in his mouth. It was insane. <laughs> it was incredible how fast that happened. I, I think you've got a, a lot of original uh, stuff there. I'd like to see you develop it more. I'd like to know more about you and what made you be that way. I, I think you I think you can make a go of it. Thank you. Yeah. I, that's why I do it. Just life is boring, so date a felon roofer with a neck tattoo. Am I right? Yeah. I don't think that's exactly what Roseanne is saying. But. Yeah. That's not exactly it. I'm trying to get to what makes you want that. Yeah. Because you're fucked up. You're the fucked up person. No. Not I'm these perfect. guys. No, but you're the fucked up person to want people to put your fucking foot in the mouth. And, you know, something about you is one. You know what I mean? You see what I'm saying? You got to turn the mirror on yourself. You see what I'm saying? That's why I left therapy. I didn't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. We there want to hear, but we want to see some ugly shit made funny. You can do it, too. Roseanne is correct. Roseanne is right. Right? Yep. Am I right? Yep. Like women, women, I like that she's saying this because this is what I'm starting to write about, how women, they'll do anything for dick. That's what nobody wants to hear, but it's the truth. They're dick-tards. <laughs> women are dick-tards. They'll do anything for fucking dick. A lot of women, you know? I call it digmatized, for sure. I like digmatized. They are. Yeah. It's like, I'll do anything for dick. You know, I'll let him beat my kids or what have you. <laughs> uh, fucking whatever, as long as I get the dick. Motherfucking stupid bitches. That's what's oh. wrong with the world is these fucking women. I used to think it was all men's fault now that I'm 70 and men are puzzled with no vaginal walls. I realize... It's all the women's fault, goddammit. That's what I say. Wisdom from a modern-day sage, Roseanne Barr. That's Samantha Mini, everybody. There she goes. You already have one of these, right? You have a little joke book? There you go. Get, get yourself a gel blaster on the way out. You guys ready to put a ribbon on this fucking thing or what? There's only one way to do it. 
Ladies and gentlemen, there is a man who has done more new minutes on this show than anyone ever has. They call him the Vanilla Gorilla, the Memphis Strangler, the Big Red Machine. This is William Lights Out Montgomery. For President's Day this year, I am going as Grover Cleveland. In the golf tournament this weekend, Tiger Woods hit his drive farther than the guy he was playing with, so Tiger gave the guy a tampon. Everybody got upset with Tiger, but people need to realize it's 2023. Men have periods now. I literally have blood dripping down my fucking inner thigh right now. It is so uncomfortable. Crazy first weekend in the XFL. <laughs> we had the Seattle Sea Dragons lay the smackdown on the Baltimore Beastmen. <laughs> the Houston Roughnecks went down to the wire and managed to beat the Grand Rapids Grizzlers in primetime. <laughs> Wait, and in primetime, the St. Louis Battlehawks totally derailed the East Palestine Headaches. <laughs> but seriously, why are we talking so much about this train crash in fucking Palestine? The Arabs and the Jews have been fighting for thousands of years. Why are we so worked up about this fucking train crash in Palestine right now? Where the fuck am I right now? Seriously. It's fucking Palestine. Okay, that's what. Wow. Wow. What a work of art. <laughs> Everything in the news this week he just covered in a minute and 30 seconds. Absolutely incredible, William. Every single one of those things that you started, every joke, I thought I knew you, where you were going and I was completely wrong. Nothing but fun twists and I've watched you more than perhaps anyone's ever watched anybody. So it's incredible to see week after week. What's going on? How do you feel? Yeah, I tried to add some Masters of the Universe bad guys into the XFL teams. I thought... But, Tony, I've had the worst uh, uh, head fog. I finally have gotten off of my Zen nicotine pouches. I was doing 12 milligrams in my mouth uh -huh. all day for the past year, and my mouth started bleeding all the time. So I thought I was literally probably going to start losing some of my teeth. So I've had this horrible head fog, and I've been chewing so much gum recently. So you're just chewing normal, not nicotine gum now. Correct. I have to get off of these things. Literally, my mouth, I see all this shit about Red Band going to... That's all he posts about. I'm at the dentist <laughs> with his sunglasses on, trying to act all fucking cool. It's not cool, dude. They're pulling your fucking teeth out. <laughs> you piece of shit. It's not going to matter you wearing the Wayfarers in the picture. Holy shit. They're tearing your teeth out of your skull. It's like, that's all I ever see when I get on your fucking it Instagram. It is so strange, the things that Red Band chooses to post about. It is very bizarre. For some reason, he thinks being in a dentist chair is, like, awesome or something like that. <laughs> you do. Yeah, you it's post. so stupid, dumbass. <laughs> why, why? You posted today, literally, back at the dentist again. <laughs> yep. Why do you keep doing that? Why do you find that to be a thing Because I've been at the dentist, like, seven times in the last two weeks. Yep. So why do you keep posting about it? That's something most people would keep a deep, dark secret. <laughs> uh, because it fucking sucks, and a lot of people know how being at the dentist sucks. So when you're there seven times... Hey, you know, when you turn almost 50 years old, I can't wait to make fun of your bullshit. You're going to be oh, dead, my dude. my asshole is bleeding out everywhere I I don't sit. think you're going to uh, be around, so... Which isn't a good thing. Get off the testosterone. You're not going to be around. I'm 36. You're not going to be around in 14 fucking years, dude, if you don't get off the testosterone. Oh, my God. Okay. I love that William thinks the testosterone is the unhealthiest <laughs> thing about Red Band. <laughs> You're rocking a Kirkland Signature sweatshirt today. We've heard about this on-again, off-again relationship. New sponsorship deal. $7.5 million next three months. <laughs> Kirkland Signature. I don't give a fuck anymore. Oh. 
you don't give a fuck about what? I don't know. I've had this horrible brain fog, Tony, <laughs> after being off the nicotine. Holy shit. Oh, my uh, goodness. Oh, my gosh. My first friend ever, Dillard Butler, is here tonight with his wife. My You're Literally my first friend ever. Wow. Really? How old were you when Shout you guys out to made Dillard. friends? I don't know. Our moms were buddies, and they would just put us on a towel in the kitchen, and we would look at each other. You think if we had Dylan... So I don't know how old that is. You think if we had Dylan come up here, would he tell us some deep, dark secrets about the young William Montgomery? I don't know. If Dillard wants to, I don't know. Is he a shy guy? No, Dillard would love to. He's always really good at spelling at PDS. Oh, shit. Should we have a spelling bee challenge? I'm kidding. Dillard, he was always really good at spelling, I remember. All right, well, I love it. Why don't you tell us a deep, dark secret about your childhood that we... Oh, wow, here he is. Oh, my goodness gracious. This is Dillard Butler, my first friend ever. Absolutely incredible. I didn't realize Hunter Biden went by Dillard now. This is frightening. Wow, look at this guy. He's dressed like an eternal tourist. He's got the fucking flip-flops. He's got little thick feet. You have thick feet, Dillard. Welcome to the show, my friend. How are you? Doing all right. Thank you for the okay. compliment about and my feet. How, you're welcome. How long have you known William for? God, 36 years. Wow. All right. Have you ever seen his dick or anything like that? It's uncomfortable. Why don't you tell us something about William as a child that we'd be surprised I to I used know. to show Dillard my penis at what point I time. Wow. The little no, it is uncomfortable. Dillard wasn't kidding. <laughs> tell us something about William that we'd be surprised to know. We talk with him every week. We never have an inside source like we this. We sort of repeated kindergarten together. That was Ooh, good. Wow, William does not seem happy about that information being released <laughs> at all. It was the tea tribe with Miss Henderson. We went to transition. It was always like eight kids in every grade. Dillard and I were in the tea tribe together. You did kindergarten twice, William? You transitioned? Yeah. They technically called it transition, which was a grade between kindergarten and first grade, but I think Whoa. I think that was more for the parents than us. <laughs> wow. Incredible. Kindergarten twice. What else? Give us some more dirt on William. Uh, we were banned from seeing each other by our parents for like two months at one point. Oh, we that's what happens school. when you get caught 69ing as kids. That's what happens. <laughs> That's what happened. It's so awkward. That was so awkward. Why did they ban you guys from seeing each other? We, um, for some reason, when we were like 15 or 16, it got to be 16 because we had cars, uh, we sort of found all these old clothes from my grandfather who'd passed away and put pillows in them and put them in the street because William thought it would be funny to put dead bodies in the road. <laughs> and... Uh, he would, uh, we would just skate. People would get out of their cars and start screaming. <laughs> wow. Look at and, that. Uh, but we did it in front of his uncle's house for some reason. And, of course, we got caught, and yeah. they were really mad. Wow. A couple of real Memphis rabble-rousers out here. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. And what do you do? What's your story in life now? Yeah, I live in Charlotte, so, uh -huh. you know. What do you do for work in Charlotte? I do some software account management. It is probably the most boring thing I could talk about on this yeah. stage. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> I don't deny it. I love it. And uh, what, what else? What, what do you do for fun? God, I don't know. I don't, know, I don't have any fun anymore. I have a three-year-old, so I stay in a lot. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, you're going to find some hobbies, Dillard. We were talking about that. You're going to find some hobbies. You're going to find some nice people in Charlotte. It's going to happen. William's going to help you. Did yeah, y'all are going to find some nice... If you guys come to Charlotte, maybe you can help me. Okay. Well, well hey, maybe I will. Whoa. Well, I mean, hopefully you come to Charlotte. Whoa. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. Have you ever thought about doing comedy? Do you have a joke or something you want to do? You seem like a funny I, guy. You have a funny delivery. Trying to think, I can tell some more stories about William if you'd like to hear that. You are one of the funniest. I remember. People. I remember one time we were we were at like Disney World or something on some family vacation, and Dillard was there, and we were rolling around in the grass outside of the hotel. And when we went back inside, we were all blue, and my mother Frances started screaming that we were all going to die, and Dillard was so fucking scared. 
Diller totally believed my mom. They had us in the bathtub for some reason, trying to make us less blue. Because we were covered in Were you blue. guys in the bathtub at the same time? We were younger. It was okay. Yeah, sure. <laughs> anyway, uh, we were... Uh, so there we are in the bathtub. I'm blue. And, um... Pencils in our you, you've met Francis. I oh yeah. yeah. Oh, I know the Montgomery. She was just uh, very telling well. me I was gonna die. I was right. like six or seven, and I thought I was gonna die. It was frightening. Right. Yeah. yeah. They they love instilling fear into everybody around them. The Montgomerys or something. It worked with William. Uh, is there anything you guys want to share about your uh, friendship? Is there anything you two want to tell each other? Dillard, I love you. Ah. Oh my goodness gracious! Look at that. You know what? Dillard. I'm going to let you guys take a bath together tonight. How about Perfect. a hand for Dillard? How about a hand for the great William Montgomery? How loud can this place get for the one and only Roseanne Barr, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. Yeah. We fucking did it. The queen of queens the queen of comedy, and now the queen of Texas, Roseanne Barr. An amazing drawing in from the great Ryan J. Ebelt. I do believe it's going to pop up there. He draws every episode, and oh, that's a different one. Hell yeah, okay. Yeah, that ain't working, but this is cool. That's the drawing. He draws every episode. It's like a uh, album cover, if you will. You're going to see it punched up in a couple weeks. I'm going to get you a framed uh, copy of that. It's fucking awesome. Uh, oh, yep, there it is. Cool. Roseanne Barr. Look at that. Fucking legendary. That's you. That looks nothing like me. <laughs> How about a hand for the best band in the land, the Screwball Peanut Butter Whiskey Kill Tony Band? James Atkins, John Dees. That's the great D Madness on the bass guitar, Matt Muling, and Paul Deemer on the horns. Follow these guys on social media. Follow them everywhere they go. Some of the best musicians on planet Earth performing nightly. They have a super band called Sketch that they've been touring all around the city, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, all around. Uh, thank you to the Red Rose, Yellow Rose, Deep Eddie Vodka, Austin Security Guard Service, Gel Blaster, Screwball Peanut Butter Whiskey. We love you guys. Thank you so much for coming out. We'll see you again soon. Love you guys. Night, everybody. Thank you. Keep moving on.